Welcome to the podcast where we explore emotional and fascinating life stories. In each episode, we will dive into unique human experiences from love to challenging moments. Today, let's think about this. What would you do if you discovered that the person you love is cheating on you? Would you confront the truth or remain silent until everything explodes? I would love to hear your thoughts. How would you react? Please leave a comment below so we can discuss. And before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a like if you enjoy this content. Your support motivates us to continue bringing you interesting stories. Let's get started. John knelt by the rattling heater, the cold metal pressing against his knee as he adjusted the loose valve. The hum of the basement's dim light buzzed over him, and a faint chill crept up his back, despite the heater's attempts at warmth. Just as he finished tightening the last bolt, he heard the house phone ring, echoing sharply through the silent walls. He picked it up, expecting a telemarketer or maybe a neighbor. But as he lifted the receiver, he froze. Janet's voice filtered through, soft and nervous, like a secret spoken in the dark. Gary, she whispered, her voice tinged with an edge of excitement you shouldn't have called here. What if John had picked up the phone? There was a brief silence, and then another voice, a man's voice, smooth and low. Don't worry, Gary replied, amusement clear in his tone. I would have told him it was work-related. John gripped the phone tightly, his heart pounding, a raw ache growing inside him as he listened. Are we still on for tomorrow? Janet asked, her voice now playful, almost girlish. I can't stop thinking about that black laundry you mentioned, and strawberries. Gary chuckled softly. Trust me, I'm looking forward to it just as much as you are. Don't worry about John. He won't know a thing. John felt his chest tighten, a mixture of shock, anger, and pain swirling inside him. The receiver felt heavy in his hand, each word from Janet twisting deeper into him like a cruel blade. His mind raced, trying to process the words, but they echoed in fragments, motel, laundry, strawberries. In a flash, the reality of her betrayal was as clear as daylight. He swallowed, his throat dry, and resisted the urge to slam the phone down, to storm upstairs and confront her on the spot. Instead, he let the receiver slip from his grasp, hanging there, dangling in the dim basement, as he pressed his fists to his temples. A bitter question circled in his mind, refusing to let him rest. Why on earth did I have to pick up that stupid phone? Standing there in the basement, he weighed his options, his mind clouded with betrayal and confusion. He could confront her right now, look her in the eye, and demand the truth. Or he could say nothing, keep this bitter knowledge to himself, and watch as her guilt unraveled her. There was a twisted satisfaction in the idea, but he knew himself too well to play games like that. Instead, he began to formulate a plan and meticulous setup to expose the affair, one that would leave her no room for excuses or apologies. If she went through with her meeting, he'd make sure she did so in front of witnesses. In his mind, he mapped it out step by step. He'd follow her, arrange interruptions, create diversions. And, if necessary, he'd make sure the world knew what Janet had done. John climbed the basement stairs slowly, each step deliberate as he replayed Janet's words in his mind. Her laughter, her nervous whispers, they were like sharp pins pricking at his every thought. He pushed open the door to the kitchen, pausing for a moment to steady himself against the counter. The familiar, once comforting scent of coffee and baked bread now felt hollow. The life he thought he knew was shifting under his feet. He couldn't confront her. Not yet. Confrontation would only lead to denial, lies, or even worse, half-hearted apologies that meant nothing. No, he wanted her to feel the weight of what she'd done, to feel the shame he now carried. But more than anything, he wanted to see her face when her secret was out in the open. And so, he began to lay the groundwork. That night, he quietly took her phone from the bedside table while she slept, careful not to wake her. He scanned her contacts, taking note of anyone who might be involved, friends who might know, numbers that looked unfamiliar. He jotted down Gary's number, a pang of anger coursing through him as he read it. After a moment's hesitation, he returned her phone, slipping it back into place beside her. In the following days, John's resolve grew stronger, his plan clearer. He bought a disposable phone, a cheap burner he could use to make anonymous calls. It felt strange in his hands foreign, like the steps he was taking were leading him into unfamiliar territory. But the idea of exposing her betrayal outweighed his discomfort. On the night before her planned rendezvous, he started putting his plan into motion. First, he arranged for several deliveries to the motel. He called local pizza places and ordered a stack of pies under a false name, setting the delivery for her meeting time. Then he called for flowers, picking the gaudiest bouquet he could think of bright carnations and roses to be delivered right to their door. He even found a cleaning service to accidentally swing by for maintenance checks. 
Finally, John made a call to Gary's wife, hesitating for just a moment as he held the phone. She deserved to know, he told himself, just as he had discovered the truth. The line rang once, twice, and then connected, her voice soft and unsuspecting. He kept it brief, his voice steady as he relayed the details of her husband's betrayal. Janet is meeting Gary tomorrow, he said, his tone a mixture of calm and tension. It'll be at the Days Inn on Route Route 9. I thought you should know. She was silent for a moment, her shock evident even over the line. Thank you, she finally whispered, her voice thick with disbelief. He ended the call, a strange satisfaction settling over him as he ticked off each step of his plan. He was ready now, ready to see her unravel under the weight of her own choices. The day dawned with a crisp chill in the air, a stark contrast to the warmth that once enveloped John's home. As he sipped his coffee, the familiar brew tasted bitter, tainted by the knowledge of the impending betrayal. Today was the day he would set his plan in motion, a carefully orchestrated performance designed to expose Janet's affair with Gary. The thought stirred a complex blend of emotions within him, anger, sorrow, and a strange sense of empowerment. John spent the morning preparing, his mind racing through each detail of his strategy. He double-checked the burner phone, ensuring it was charged and ready for action. Each aspect of his plan was meticulously arranged. It felt like a chess game where he was finally taking control of the board. As the hours passed, John donned a facade of normalcy. He interacted with Janet as if everything was perfectly fine, sharing mundane conversations about the weather and their son Terry's upcoming college plans. Inside, though, he was a volcano ready to erupt. Every smile she flashed at him felt like a cruel mockery of the truth he now held. But he kept his composure, knowing that the storm would soon break. When the time came for Janet to leave, she seemed oblivious to the brewing tempest. She dressed carefully, choosing a fitted top that accentuated her figure and a pair of jeans that clung to her curves. John watched her, a silent observer in the unfolding drama. His heart ached with conflicting feelings love for the woman he once cherished and betrayal that gnawed at his insides like acid. Are you going out? He asked, feigning casual interest as she slipped on her shoes. Just to meet a friend for coffee, she replied, glancing at her watch. I'll be back in a few hours. Be safe, he said, his voice steady despite the turmoil within. As she opened the door and stepped out, he felt a sense of release, like a dam breaking. She was heading straight into his carefully laid trap. Once she was gone, John wasted no time. He activated the burner phone, sending a flurry of messages to the various service providers he'd contacted. The pizza deliveries were on their way, scheduled to arrive just before Janet would meet Gary at the motel. He also alerted the motel's management, ensuring they were ready for the maintenance requests he had filed earlier. Every piece of his plan was falling into place, each detail weaving together to create the tapestry of his revenge. If you find it interesting, please comment number two. If it is not interesting, please press number one so we can fix the content to be better and better. As the afternoon wore on, he took a moment to step outside. The sun hung low in the sky, casting a golden hue over the neighborhood. It was a beautiful day, one he would have enjoyed with Janet before all this. Instead, he felt a chill creeping back into his bones, a reminder of the betrayal he had uncovered. John made one last call, this time to the local news station, a decision he had hesitated on until now. Hi, I have a story that might interest you, he said, his voice dripping with faux sincerity. A couple of local businesses are engaging in some, let's say, dubious activities. I think you might want to look into it. With that, he set the stage for the grand reveal. He envisioned the chaos that would unfold the motel room flooded with deliveries, maintenance staff arriving unexpectedly, and the police perhaps even getting involved. He could almost hear the laughter of the pizza delivery drivers as they stood in the parking lot, bewildered by the unfolding spectacle. As the hour approached, he paced the living room, the silence of the house weighing heavy on his chest. Each tick of the clock echoed like a drumbeat, counting down to the moment he would finally confront the reality of his wife's betrayal. Would she feel the weight of her actions as he revealed her secret? Would she recognize the pain she had inflicted upon him? The doorbell rang, jolting him from his thoughts. John glanced at the clock. It was almost time. He took a deep breath, steadying himself. The moment he had orchestrated was at hand. The sun hung high in the sky, casting a warm glow over the town, but John felt an icy chill run down his spine as the hour approached. Today was the day everything would come to light. He glanced at the clock again, counting down the minutes until Janet's meeting with Gary. Every tick felt like a drumroll, building anticipation and anxiety in equal measure. 
John settled into his car, the engine rumbling to life beneath him. He drove towards the Modell, his hands gripping the steering wheel tightly as his mind raced with thoughts of what was to come. The world outside passed by in a blur trees swaying gently in the breeze, children playing in yards. The mundane beauty of everyday life that he once cherished now felt like a cruel joke. He was about to shatter that normalcy, revealing the darkness lurking beneath the surface. Arriving at the day's inn, John parked strategically out of sight, hidden among the trees that framed the parking lot. He could see the motel entrance clearly from where he sat, a vantage point that would allow him to witness the unfolding drama without being seen. He glanced at his phone. The pizza deliveries were scheduled to arrive shortly, and the anticipation gnawed at him. As he waited, John reviewed his plan in his mind one last time. The first pizza delivery would arrive at 5 p.m., just as Janet and Gary were expected to settle into their rendezvous. The second delivery would follow moments later, with the flowers arriving just after that. He had also informed the local media, hoping they would arrive in time to capture the chaos that was about to ensue. His heart raced as he spotted Janet's car pull into the parking lot. She stepped out, her confidence on full display, completely unaware of the storm that was brewing. Dressed in a fitted black top that accentuated her curves and a playful smile that seemed to suggest all was right with the world, she walked towards the motel entrance with a bounce in her step. John clenched his jaw, his emotions swirling between anger and a deep, aching sadness. Moments later, a silver sedan rolled into the lot. John's pulse quickened as Gary emerged, his presence striking a stark contrast to the ordinary surroundings. With his charming smile and casual demeanor, he sauntered towards Janet, the two meeting in an embrace that felt like a punch to John's gut. In that moment, everything John had felt was confirmed, and he had to fight against the urge to confront them right there. John's phone buzzed, pulling him back from the brink of his emotions. It was the first delivery, arriving ahead of schedule. He couldn't help but smirk. This was only the beginning. As the pizza delivery driver approached, John placed a quick call to the motel front desk. I think there's a maintenance issue in room 214, he said casually. You might want to send someone over right away. He hung up, satisfaction washing over him. The wheels were now firmly in motion. Within moments, the first pizza was delivered, and John watched as the driver knocked on the door to room 214. Janet opened it, her surprise evident as she greeted the driver with a puzzled look. The driver, oblivious to the tension, handed her the pizza, exchanging pleasantries. John stifled a laugh, relishing the absurdity of the situation. But the real spectacle was yet to come. The second delivery arrived just as the first was being finished. Another knock, another delivery, and then came the flowers. The vivid colors of the bouquet contrasted sharply with the dull exterior of the motel. John could see Janet's expression shift from confusion to annoyance as the deliveries piled up outside the door. His heart raced with a mix of exhilaration and dread. This was his moment, and as the chaos unfolded, he realized that he was on the brink of confronting the greatest betrayal of his life. Would she finally understand the weight of her actions? Would Gary? As he sat there, hidden but very much a part of the unfolding drama, John felt a sense of power wash over him. He was no longer a passive observer. He was the architect of this revelation. As the last pizza box was carried inside, John felt the weight of the moment settle heavily on his shoulders. He watched from his hidden vantage point, his heart pounding as he anticipated what was to come. The scene inside the motel room was about to erupt into chaos, a spectacle he had orchestrated with meticulous care. Suddenly, a voice broke through the tension. It was the motel's maintenance staff responding to John's earlier call. He could see them approach the door, tools in hand, ready to knock. John's breath quickened. This was the moment when everything would change. The maintenance worker rapped on the door, and a moment later it swung open. Janet stood there, her expression shifting from surprise to confusion. What's going on? She asked, looking from the maintenance man to the pile of pizza boxes. Just routine checks, Mom, he replied, glancing at the deliveries. We received a call about some issues in this room. Before she could respond, John took a deep breath and dialed Gary's number. The ringing on the other end seemed to echo in the silence of his car, each tone a countdown to the inevitable confrontation. Hello. Gary's voice came through, casual and unsuspecting. Gary, John said, his voice steady but tinged with a quiet intensity. If you touch my wife, there will be serious consequences. Do you understand? There was a beat of silence on the line before Gary stammered John. What are you talking about? John hung up, his heart racing with adrenaline. 
He had made his presence known without revealing himself. And now, the stage was set. He watched as the maintenance worker continued to talk to Janet, who looked increasingly distressed. The facade she had maintained began to crack under the weight of her choices. Suddenly, the door burst open again, and Gary stepped out, confusion written all over his face. What's going on, Janet? he asked, glancing around as if he could sense the tension in the air. John's pulse quickened as he observed Janet's face drain of color. She glanced between Gary and the maintenance worker, her eyes widening in realization. I, I don't know, she stammered, the confidence she had displayed moments ago evaporating. Before she could react further, John made his move. He stepped out from his hiding place, revealing himself. Surprise, he said, his voice calm yet cutting through the air like ice. Janet's face twisted with shock. John, she gasped, a mixture of horror and disbelief flashing across her features. Gary turned sharply, his expression shifting from confusion to fear as he realized the gravity of the situation. I, I didn't know you were here, he stammered, backing away slightly. Save it, John shot back, his voice steady. This is not about you. This is about my wife's choices and the lies we've been living. The tension hung heavy in the air as the truth settled among them. John's heart raced, but he felt a strange sense of liberation, finally confronting the betrayal head-on. The realization that he no longer had to hide from this truth surged through him like a wave. Janet opened her mouth to speak, but John held up a hand, cutting her off. No more excuses, Janet. You've made your choices, and now you have to face the consequences. With that, John turned and walked away, leaving them in the motel room. Their world shattered. The chaos that ensued behind him was a symphony of confusion voices raised, questions unanswered, the weight of betrayal hanging thick in the air. In the days that followed, John filed for divorce. The aftermath was messy and painful, filled with bitter exchanges and the haunting echoes of their broken vows. Janet lost her job, her world collapsing under the weight of her choices, while John focused on rebuilding his life. He found solace in the routine of work and spending time with their son, Terry. They bonded over late-night video games and shared meals, finding comfort in the simplicity of being together. The pain of betrayal lingered, but John felt a growing strength within him, a determination to move forward. Years later, at Terry's graduation, John and Janet found themselves face to face once more. The air between them was thick with unspoken words and the weight of shared history. As they talked, Janet expressed her regrets, the sincerity in her voice stirring a flicker of emotion within him. I was looking for something I thought I was missing, she confessed, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. It wasn't love with Gary. It was more about curiosity about what I thought I wanted. John listened, a mixture of sympathy and caution washing over him. They both had changed, shaped by their experiences and the scars of their past. Though the memories were painful, there was a shared understanding that transcended their betrayal. Maybe we can try to rebuild, Janet suggested tentatively, her voice steady yet vulnerable. I don't expect everything to be the same, but I hope we can find a way forward. John met her gaze, contemplating the road ahead. I think we can start with friendship, he replied, a cautious hope blossoming within him. And so, with tentative steps and guarded hearts, they began to navigate the complexities of their new reality, sharing laughter and memories, slowly finding their way back to each other one moment at a time. In the weeks following that fateful confrontation, Janet found herself adrift in a sea of turmoil. The shock of being exposed in the motel room had shattered her carefully constructed world, and the aftermath felt like a relentless storm battering against her. She had lost everything her marriage, her job, and the sense of security she had once taken for granted. Janet sat on the edge of her bed, the walls of her small apartment closing in on her. The room was bare, stripped of the warmth and comfort it had once held. Boxes filled with her belongings lay scattered about, remnants of a life that felt like it belonged to someone else. She could hear the faint sounds of traffic outside, a constant reminder of the world moving on without her. The phone rang, jolting her from her thoughts. She glanced at the caller ID and hesitated, a wave of dread washing over her. It was Gary. They hadn't spoken since that day, and the silence between them had grown heavy and uncomfortable. With a deep breath, she answered. Hey, Gary's voice was tentative, laced with uncertainty. I was wondering if we could talk. Talk about what? Janet replied, her tone sharp. The bitterness of their last encounter hung between them, a thick fog that neither could ignore. I don't know, he admitted, about everything that happened. I feel like we both need closure. Closure? Janet echoed, incredulous. You think we can just talk this out like it was some casual misunderstanding? 
Janet, please. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, he pleaded. I thought we had something special. Janet's heart hardened at his words. What we had was a lie, Gary. You knew I was married, and yet you still pursued me. You helped create this mess, and now I'm paying for it. As she spoke, she felt the weight of her emotion surge to the surface. Anger bubbled within her, but beneath it was a deeper sorrow, a profound sense of loss. She had betrayed the man who loved her, the man who had built a life with her, and the repercussions of her choices now felt unbearable. I'm sorry, Gary's voice was barely above a whisper. I never wanted to hurt you. Too late for apologies, she snapped, cutting him off. I need to figure out my life without you in it. With that, she hung up, feeling both empowered and defeated. The reality of her situation was sinking in. She had betrayed John in a way that was unforgivable, and now she faced the consequences alone. As the divorce papers arrived a few days later, Janet felt a mix of relief and despair. She skimmed through the documents, her heart heavy with each line she read. John was moving forward, reclaiming his life while she was left to pick up the pieces of her shattered dreams. The court date loomed ahead, an ominous reminder of her choices. She sat at the kitchen table, staring blankly at the walls, her mind racing with memories of better times. Laughter around the dinner table, late night talks in bed. The warmth of John's embrace it all felt like a distant echo now, replaced by the chilling reality of her mistakes. On the day of the hearing, Janet dressed carefully, donning a simple yet elegant outfit that felt out of place in the sterile environment of the courthouse. She arrived early, her heart pounding as she took a seat in the waiting area, surrounded by strangers, each with their own stories of hard ash. When John walked in, she felt a rush of emotions flooding back love, regret, and overwhelming sorrow. Their eyes met briefly, and she could see the pain etched across his features. He had transformed, carrying himself with a quiet strength that she had always admired. As they entered the courtroom, the tension between them was palpable. They sat across from each other, and Janet felt the weight of their shared history pressing down on her. She longed to reach across the table and apologize to express the deep regret that gnawed at her insides, but the words caught in her throat, lodged between fear and shame. The proceedings were swift and clinical, a stark contrast to the emotional turmoil swirling within her. When the judge finally asked if there were any final statements, Janet hesitated, her heart racing as she struggled to find the right words. I, I regret what I've done, she finally said, her voice barely above a whisper. I wish things could be different. I wish I hadn't hurt you, John. John met her gaze, and for a moment, the walls between them seemed to fade. I wish that too, he replied, his tone softening. But we can't change the past. We can only move forward. With that, the judge declared the marriage officially over. Janet felt a strange mix of relief and sorrow wash over her. The finality of it hit her hard. It was a chapter closed, but the memories lingered like shadows in the corners of her mind. As she left the courtroom, she knew that her journey toward healing had just begun. It would take time to rebuild her life, to rediscover who she was without John by her side. But she felt a flicker of hope ignite within her, a belief that perhaps one day she could forgive herself and find a way back to happiness. Months turned into years, and the pain of the past gradually morphed into something more bearable. Janet moved through life with a newfound determination, using her experiences as stepping stones rather than stumbling blocks. Each day was a reminder of the choices she had made, but with each passing moment, she learned to embrace the lessons they offered. Terry was thriving in college, his accomplishments a source of pride for both Janet and John. Despite their turbulent past, they found a way to co-parent effectively, prioritizing their son's happiness above all else. Their interactions, once fraught with tension, had evolved into a cautious but respectful friendship. They exchanged texts about Terry's milestones, laughed about old memories, and even shared coffee occasionally the air between them lighter than it had been during the divorce. On the day of Terry's graduation, Janet felt a whirlwind of emotion stirring within her. She arrived early, a bouquet of flowers in hand, ready to celebrate this significant moment in her son's life. The auditorium buzzed with excitement as families gathered, their laughter and cheers echoing off the walls. As she took her seat, she spotted John across the room. He was talking with some friends, a genuine smile lighting up his face. It struck her how much time had changed them both, reshaping their lives in unexpected ways. As the ceremony began, Janet's heart swelled with pride as she watched Terry walk across the stage, his cap tilted jauntily, a huge grin plastered across his face. In that moment, all the heartache and turmoil faded into the background, overshadowed by the joy of seeing her son achieve his dreams. 
she felt a hand on her shoulder and turned to find John standing beside her, a proud smile mirroring her own. He looks just like you, John remarked, nodding towards Terry as he accepted his diploma. I can't believe how grown up he is. Janet nodded, her throat tight with emotion. It's hard to believe he's off to college soon. I'm so proud of him, John. They shared a moment of silence, the weight of shared memories hanging between them. But this time it felt less like a burden and more like a bridge connecting their past to the present. As the ceremony wrapped up, they found themselves standing together, waiting for Terry to finish mingling with his friends. When Terry finally reached them, his face beamed with excitement. Mom, Dad, you made it, he exclaimed, pulling them both into a hug. The warmth of their son's embrace enveloped them, a reminder of the love that had always been at the core of their family, despite the fractures that had once threatened to tear it apart. As they posed for pictures, Janet felt a surge of hope and possibility. Perhaps it was time to redefine what family meant for them. Maybe we should all go out for dinner together, she suggested, glancing between John and Terry. John raised an eyebrow but nodded, a hint of a smile on his lips. I think that's a great idea. The three of them made their way to a nearby restaurant, the atmosphere buzzing with laughter and celebration. Over dinner, they reminisced about old family traditions, shared funny stories from Terry's childhood, and talked about their hopes for the future. Janet found herself laughing more than she had in a long time, the weight of regret lifting a little more with each shared smile. As the night wore on, Janet caught John's eye. He looked different now, more relaxed, more at peace. Perhaps, like her, he had found a way to move forward. The idea of rebuilding a friendship, however tentative, felt both thrilling and terrifying. I know things haven't been easy between us, Janet said, her voice steady. But I think we're both trying to be better people for Terry. And I appreciate that. John nodded, his expression thoughtful. Yeah, I think we both learned a lot. I'm glad we could find a way to make this work. As they finished their meal, a sense of closure began to settle over Janet. While the past would always be a part of her, it no longer defined her. She had faced her mistakes, learned from them, and emerged stronger. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in a long time, she felt a sense of hope blossoming within her belief that healing was possible, and perhaps even a new beginning. As they left the restaurant, Janet took a deep breath of the cool evening air, feeling the weight of the past lift just a little more. They walked together, side by side, toward a future that, while still unknown, felt filled with potential. Maybe, just maybe, they could find their way back to each other in some form. But for now they were a family, and that was enough.